Who can debate but that this is a dark day that we're now living in? And so many people crying out for life as God's people are feeling the weight of the darkness of the hour we're now living in. It's as if there's an all out assault of hell against everything good and everything of God. There's such vitriol, there's such evil speech. There's such a breakdown of morality. And it just seems like everything of hell has come against everything of God and everything that's good. That The Bible warns, Christ himself said, in the last days it will become so lawless and so dark that the love of many will grow cold. The love of life, the love of a future, the love of purpose, the love of people. There, there'll be an assault against hope in the human heart. And it will come as an orchestrated assault. I, I believe we're, we're living in the days where we're watching an orchestrated assault against Jesus Christ himself. And it's worldwide. It's not just here in America, but it's all over the world. Everything evil is now being called good. Everything good is being called evil. We're watching everything just turned upside down and how fast it's all happening. You, I, I, I've only been here in America for 24 years now, and I'm stunned at the rapidity of the degeneration of this society uh, all around. And, and it, it's, it's, it's an orchestrated assault. Now, the prophet Joel spoke about uh, in his book, it's only three short chapters, but in those chapters, he speaks about an assault of darkness that came against the nation of Israel uh, because of the careless handling of the things of God. Now, that's the beginning of this book of Joel. And then he speaks about what God asks of his people and how God responds to the cry of those that are called in that time by the name of God. And then Joel suddenly fasts forwards to our day, a day when there's going to be a thick darkness covering the earth and how God is going to respond to the cry of his people, how he's going to combat this darkness in our generation. Let me start in Joel chapter two. Now this, this was a plague of locusts that came against the nation of Israel. Most who study it agree on this. Speaking of these plagues of locusts in chapter two, verse seven, Joel said, they run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation. They do not break ranks. You ever noticed how difficult it is for the people of God to walk in unity? And how easy it seems to be for people who are evil to walk in unity according to their purpose? They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they're not cut down. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall, they climb into the houses, they enter at the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them, the heavens tremble, the sun and the moon grow dark, and the stars diminish their brightness. Can you just imagine living at a day like this, when the plague of locusts is so thick, so dark, so powerful, that you suddenly realize, God, there's nothing we can do to stop this. And this darkness, that is invading our nation is going to take away our hope, our provision, our future. But what can we do? How can we combat this? We can't fight it in the natural. You know, it talks about even though they, they probably formed some different types of weapon as they saw it against this onslaught, but it seems like it was making no difference. But here is what the Lord tells the people to do. Blow the trumpet in Zion, verse 15. Consecrate a fast and call a sacred assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation. In other words, gather the people of God and tell the people of God, get your life in line with the word of God. Get away from what is making you weak and walk towards that place where God says he will be God to you and he will become your strength. Sanctify the congregation. Cause the people, call the people to be separated to the purposes of God and to get away from every place they should not be. Assemble the elders, gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. The Lord says, meet me face to face. Don't hide from me any longer. Stand up, people of God. Have the courage to face me. 
Have the courage to open your Bibles, begin to read it. And what I say truth is, that's what it is. And what I tell you to walk away from, walk away from it. And the promises I give to you are the things that I will do. Every promise I made to you is yea and amen. And it will not be turned away from you. But I ask you to stand up and meet me face to face. Stand up and meet me. Don't hide from me any longer. Bring the whole church together. Bring the whole body together. And let's, as the God once said through the prophet Isaiah, come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as red as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. When they saw 120 people come out of a place of prayer, they had no weapons. They had no heritage in the natural. They had no strength. They had no army. But they claimed to have had a stand-up, face-to-face encounter with God. And God had met them right where they were, and they stepped out. And I'm sure there were a lot of mockers that day. But little did they know that this little group of people who had been in the presence of God were going to be used of God to overthrow that dominant power of Rome and cause even Rome to bend its knee to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. 120 people who stood up and had a face-to-face encounter with the living God. Don't let the nations, the leaders should say, say to the people where mockingly, where is your God? That should be the cry of your heart tonight. It ought to be the cry of my heart. Don't let anybody say of me, where is his God or where is her God? Let it be evident, Lord, that your presence is in my life. Let there be power in my speech. Let the devils of hell tremble when I walk into a room. Let hell be afraid of the presence of God in my life. Let there be a compassion in my voice that melts every hardened heart. Let there be authority that causes every prison door to have to release its captives. Let there be no mockery of my God or the presence of my God in my life. Let no power of hell No mocker of God ever say, where is his God? Where is her God? Here's what he also says. It will come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. He's talking about this day now that we're living in. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and Jerusalem there shall be deliverance as the Lord has said among the remnant whom the Lord calls. I will pour out my spirit. I'm going to give you my very life is going to come and intertwine itself with your life. And I'm going to give you the power to see things that can't be seen with the natural eye, to say things that can't be said with the natural tongue. I'm going to give you the power to your young and to your old, to your maid servants, to your man servants, to your children. I'm going to be God to you. I'm going to pour out my spirit in those days. Yes, it's going to be dark. Yes, there's going to be all kinds of signs happening that show us that we are living close to the return of Christ. But one of the greatest signs of all is there's going to be a people who call out to me and I'm going to answer them. And I'm going to be a testimony through them. I'm going to be the light through them into this darkened age that we're now living in. And I tell you, my brother, my sister, you and I ought not to be satisfied for anything less than what God promises. There has to be, I'm praying this prayer now. I pray it every day. I pray it in my car. I pray it when I'm brushing my teeth. I pray it when I'm getting ready to come into New York City. I pray it when I'm on the way home. Oh God, give me your Holy Spirit in a new way. Give me your strength. Give me your power. Be glorified through my life, O God. Let let me not just be a sideline, nothing player in these last days. 
My God, I see promises here when I call out to you. And I say, Lord, don't let my life be a reproach. Don't let anybody say of me, where is his God? Don't let it be said. Lord, come to me in power. Come to me in strength. Come to me with your glory. Come to me with the giftings of your spirit. It requires a cry. It requires a face-to-face -face encounter with God. It requires an honest dealing with the Son of God. God does not come and play games with the game player. Do you understand? comes to the honest heart, comes to the person who wants to be used for his glory. He comes and says, you call out to me. You recognize who you are without me. And then I will show you who I am inside of you. I will make my name to be known through your life and in your generation. I don't know about you, but I want my family to see Christ in me, the hope of glory. I want my neighbors to see Christ in me. I want the clerk in the store to see Christ in me. I want people walking down the street to suddenly stop and turn and look and start thinking about God because I just walked by and the presence of God is in my life. I'm not willing just to whimper into the sunset and let darkness have the day. No, sir. Not when I see promises of God like this in the word of God. No, sir. No, sir. No, ma'am. And neither should you. We're not going to give up and we're not going to give in and we're not going to give away this day <clears throat> to the powers of darkness. We are the people of the living God. We are the church of the living Christ. There's a power of God resident within us. There's a willingness of God to show himself strong again in our generation. If you and I have the courage to let him be God. And as a child of God, you have that whisper too. You do. You have that whisper. You, you may try to push it away. It may be a thought that just keeps coming back and it's so preposterous you don't even want to entertain it. You don't believe that God could ever do it in your life. I want to challenge you tonight. Start agreeing with him. Start agreeing and say, God, I, I'm, I'm in. I know I can't do this, but you open the door, I'll walk through it. You take me, I'll go. All I ask is that I, I don't want to be a marginal player in the kingdom of God. I don't want to be somebody who the people look at and said, where is your God? I want to walk with you and I want you to walk with me and I will have an honest face-to-face -face encounter with you. I know I have nothing to offer your kingdom. That was my prayer back then. If you need a bad temper, I got that, but I got not much else to give you. I don't, I don't have any speaking ability, but I have a heart that wants you. I have a heart that wants to live for you. I want to serve you. I want to make a difference in my generation. So if you can use that, then Lord, you can have me. But now my prayer is even deeper than it used to be. Here's my prayer now. I want to see this nation spiritually awakened. I want to see a massive turning to God. I'm asking you, Lord, to save more people than we can count. I'm asking the number of people that would come into your house from coast to coast would be so massive that nobody could count it. Nobody could take credit for it. Nobody could take the glory for it. It would all belong to you. And people would know that you have visited your people once again. I'm asking you, God, to revive every church with every name on the door of every denomination. I'm asking you to bring in those walls, every hungry soul from every place of every persuasion. I'm asking you to save rich and poor, young and old, people that we think could be saved and people we think never could be saved. I'm asking you, God, bring them in and fill them with your Holy Spirit. And you may say, well, is that possible? You see, with God, all things are possible. And I'm asking of you tonight, those that are online, those that are here in the sanctuary, that you would get to the point in your life where you say, God, I'm not sitting out this game. I'm not sitting on the bench. There's got to be something inside you that says, give me the ball. It's that person at the back of the room that says, if you got some spare talents, give them to me. I want to glorify your name. I want to go deeper. I want to go farther. I want to be light in this darkened time. I want authority in my voice. I want power in my step. I want clarity in my mind. I want conviction to come through my words. My God, my God, my God, for your holy name's sake and for the sake of the people, Lord Jesus Christ, if you can use nothing, use me and use me for your glory. But let it never be said of me, where is his or her God? May it never be said. Praise be to God. It's the man or woman that says tonight, God, I will meet you face to face. I'm not going to hide. 
you told the prophet Joel, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, let the bridegroom come out, let the bride come out of her closet, let them meet each other face to face. And you said you would give us provision and new joy and the healing would begin to flow from our lives. Oh God, I pray tonight, Lord, for this congregation. Pray for people online, Lord, that we would recognize who we are and how much you are willing to be God to us. I ask you, Lord, that we would have that face-to-face -face encounter with you and believe you, God, for what only you can do. We recognize we could never, we can't win this day. The darkness is too great. The agenda is too strong. Our carelessness is too evident. But Lord, let it never be said of you that you have a people that are of no effect, of no power in the earth. I pray for your namesake first, Lord, for you deserve to be worshiped and you deserve to be honored. God, I'm asking you in Jesus' name for the people tonight that you would fill us anew and afresh with your Holy Spirit. You would give us the courage to believe that the things that you have for our lives, that we would agree with you and just trust you to open the doors before us. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.